Hey everyone, my name's Keenan. Welcome to a special Arbitrum launch community call here at DXDAO held today, August 26th of 2021. Uh, today we're going to be talking all things Arbitrum. Uh, we'll be starting with a recap of DXDAO's launch plan, uh, a demonstration of the soon to be deployed DX vote, and a dedicated portion to Swapper and its token launch. This, uh, this also includes a Swapper, the Swapper Squad's second AMA which may or may not have a celebratory POAP involved, which you'll need to be on this call to receive, so you don't want to miss it. Um, but let's get started right away here with the Arbitrum launch plan. Maybe uh, John can kick it off and we can go from there. Sure thing. Thanks, Keenan. Um, so I guess we're going to focus a little bit on the, the technical um, steps for the launch, which are outlined in a DAO talk post. Um, I don't have it handy, but maybe somebody could drop that in the chat. Um, so there's a few few steps involved, and we wanted to um, enable this process to be done in the same way that um, all of our products are generally updated, where <clears throat> devs on on the squad working on the product do a release and you know provide the details necessary to deploy the updates, and then it's up to the community to do the actual deployment, and that could be done by anybody. They could be anonymous. Um, all they have to be able to do is follow the uh, directions and have a little bit of technical skill around that. So I'll walk through that briefly here. Um, the first step was to actually um, deploy the Swapper token and to uh, alert the community that this had been deployed uh, through a proposal to DXDAO on Alchemy. Um, and we've seen this actually happen. So that if you go to Alchemy, you can see that there's a Swapper signal proposal and this um, indicates that the swapper token had been deployed it shares the address um, it it provides a signal text that was outlined in the DAO talk proposal which uh, describes the role of the swapper token um, and some of the initial goals around its uh, use and governance and stuff so that's important to to read and vote on if you're a rep holder that's live on Alchemy. The other important thing that that proposal uh, uh, signaled was that th the address that had deployed the Swapper token, since Arbitrum is currently whitelisted, uh, the, the Swapper dev squad has to ask the Arbitrum team to whitelist any addresses to do things on Arbitrum. So part of this plan as outlined on, on DowTalk was once the community saw this proposer um, make a proposal to Alchemy, they would ask Arbitrum to whitelist that proposer's address so that that same proposer could go and subsequently deploy um, the swapper contracts onto Arbitrum and send the initial amount of swapper token to the right places on Arbitrum. So that was another step that has, has been completed. Um, and, and then the next thing here was deploying DX vote, which is the um, governance framework that's based on the DAO stack contracts that we use on mainnet uh, with some modifications, some new schemes and a new interface. Augusta is, I think, going to talk more about that. So once once that uh, was deployed, that's the DXDAO base on Arbitrum. There was, the plan was to have a proposal that kind of pointed out the contracts. That was done, there's a proposal live that points to all of the DX vote contracts on Arbitrum, and Augusta is going to talk more about that. And then the third and final step is actually was actually deploying Swapper to Arbitrum, getting the Swapper token in the right place, and doing a proposal to update Swapper.eth to the latest release of the Swapper DAP. So that was in the hands of the the, the deployer. Um, and this is all outlined on the DAO talk post. And now we've actually seen this proposal. It's live. It's been boosted, and I think it's slated to pass on Saturday. So Things seem to be going to plan here. It's a bit complicated. You can see it all outlined in the DAO talk post. Um, if if things kind of move along schedule here and go well, and it is a bit complicated, so I'm holding my breath a bit. Uh, but the Swapper.eth proposal could pass on Saturday, which would make uh, yeah basically Arbitrum one accessible through Swapper.eth with the deployments on Arbitrum, and then the only thing preventing people from actually using Swapper would be Arbitrum launching and going live. Uh, and opening up to everybody. Right now, it's just the whitelisted addresses. And once once that's the case, the airdrop will be live and, and everything. 
Um, now, there's other pieces that I think we're going to talk about more too, which is like the liquidity mining and potential liquidity from DXDAO itself. In order to enable that, we need to have uh, the DXDAO governance set up in a certain way on Arbitrum. And so the, the, the base has been deployed. There is a specific module which is designed to interact with the swapper farming contracts. And it's set up to move relatively quickly compared to mainnet governance. It's it's allowed to pass proposals that are boosted in basically a day and a half. Um, there is, though, a requirement that uh, a certain amount of percentage of rep vote on those proposals in order for them to pass. And so that's been set a little bit higher since, since with a faster proposal time, you want a little more security there. And so it's being set to seven and a half percent. Um, but yeah, so in order to, to set this module up in order to interact with the swapper farming contracts, the factory there, uh, it does need to be configured with permissions. And so Augusto actually just yesterday submitted a proposal to update those permissions. And so once that passes and it's slated to pass on next Wednesday, then DXDAO has the ability to make proposals for liquidity mining rewards and and they could pass relatively quickly. So yeah, hopefully if all goes well, um, Arbitrum launches in August as they planned, the airdrop will be live and liquidity mining will come only a few days after via proposals to the base. So it's a lot. Um, if people have questions, I guess we could, could try to answer that. Hopefully I, I did an okay job explaining it, but there's there's a bunch of stuff happening. So. Yeah, I think that's a, a good recap. Thank you. Um, in case anyone's new here, we do open questions after each topic. Feel free to write whatever you'd like in the Town Hall text channel. I do have a couple left with me we can start with. Um, start off with this one here. Uh, DXDAO and Swapper are deploying to Arbitrum. Should we expect Omen and Aqua to follow? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I definitely think if Arbitrum goes well, it'll be attractive for the other dApps uh, and projects that we have to deploy there. Now, I mean, Aqua hasn't launched yet, and there's a lot of other activity going on Omen, so I don't I don't want to set expectations that that's like an imminent thing, but uh, it, it could make sense for sure. And I don't know if Geronimo is on the call. Maybe he could speak to, to the Omen perspective. But, but I think we would respond to... <laughs> oh god that's that's a new version of dj geronimo he has this issue with his i don't know airpods or something but yeah i think we'll respond we'll respond to how things are going on arbitrum like if if it seems like there's so much activity there and we really need to get omen on there then that can be made a priority Looks like he's back in the call maybe wants to try one more time <laughs> okay, so that's just that's just unbridled excitement for Arbitrum. And yeah. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. If you uh if you end up fixing your uh your mic drone, let me know and we'll uh we'll let you on. He's saying that X ties are playground in the chat right now. Arbitrum and or L2 is the goal. Cool. Um, another question left with me here. Um, if the anonymous deployer were to end up being malicious, will the swapper launch need to be pushed back? Yes. Yeah, basically, if, if something was screwed up here, and I mean, it looks like it wasn't. It looks like things are in the right place. So I think it, it should be good to go. But if, if they had, like, for instance, not sent the tokens to the right place, or, or you know, other things could potentially get screwed up here. Like if if that were to happen, we sort of would have to start over again. So I'm really hopeful though that that won't be the case. Things seem to look good so far. Everything is verifiable, anyways. For example, when we deploy the export, I share instructions of how to verify the bytecode of the smart contracts that were deployed. And uh, well, you could see all the permissions that were set, the configurations. So that is very important, and, and that is something that uh, we are going to be doing, verifying that the smart contracts are the right ones, that the code is uh, it's what it should be, right? 
and the funds and the and all the swapper tokens was sent to the right address and then we can uh, we can move forward with but that's very important that everything can be verifiable that we we are going to verify that it is uh yeah that you can verify the smart contracts uh all that is there and where the funds are Great. And one more question left with me. Um, is the $2.25 million commitment to Arbitrum only to kickstart ADXDAO and is further funding in the cards? Hey, can you repeat that? Yeah. Is the, uh, is the $2.25 million commitment to Arbitrum only to kickstart ADXDAO and is further funding in the cards? Uh, yeah, Chris may, Powers may want to speak to this because he, I think, worked on that proposal. Um, I would say, again, we respond to how things are going, and it would depend on the conditions on Arbitrum. Like, if it goes well and it's growing, if they, you know, actually remove their administrative privileges and make it truly decentralized, uh, how high is the liquidity cap on, like, they may be actually capping the amount of money that's moved to Arbitrum. So I, I think those are all factors that would maybe play into a decision, but it's, yeah, it's definitely possible that more capital could be moved over. It looks like Chris isn't able to talk right now, but I believe that is, that's correct. I guess it depends also on how much value is Arbitrum giving us uh, on the governance or the operation level. I mean, if we see that, hey, it is working great, and we are, maybe we, we replace XDAI or operations with Arbitrum, who knows? But yeah, it depends on how, how is it going to work, how safe is it, it's going to be, because the more funds you have there, the, uh, the more risk. So yeah, we will have to wait and see, but I guess that's an option. We do yeah, have... Go ahead, so we, we do have like other L2s coming up or like uh, there is potential. Um, like we don't know which L2 is going to win. And uh, yeah, so I think we need to take one step at a time. We can predict stuff, but I think in the end, it is where the communities, it is where the usage is. I think Swapper will be like Deke Stau's, uh I don't. I don't want to say playground. It is real money. We are actually betting on Arbitrum, but we don't know, and no one knows. Uh, there is a lot of things happening in the space right now. We just see like Avalanche and other sh chains like growing rapidly from nowhere. Uh, but I think in the end, we bet on Ethereum and L2s to be the to be the place where swapping will happen, at least for Swapper. And DXDAO has a strong focus on decentralization, and, and that's part of the reasoning for why resources are being focused on Arbitrum, right? It's the first generalized L2 to launch uh, on Ethereum in like an open way. Optimism is, is the other one, but they are relatively closed and only adding projects kind of one at a time. Um, so yeah, so I mean, that that's the rationale for why Arbitrum deserves focus. XDAI, like Geronimo said, is is sort of been a, a playground it's a side chain um i think we we like xdi we're going to stay committed to xdi but the reason that we made that compromise on decentralization for xdi was to have experience deploying on other chains ahead of when l2s would be deployed with the the eye and, and the goal being to eventually live on uh, l2s that are secured ultimately by the ethereum blockchain and inherit those you know security properties and censorship resistant properties that lend well to our focus on decentralization. Excellent, thank you guys. Um, if there's nothing else on the general topic of our Arbitrum launch plan, uh, we can move on to DX vote um, with Augusto looking at uh, a generalized uh, description of the deployment to Arbitrum and maybe even a demo in the cards. Yeah, sure. Let me share my screen and see. 
Uh, well, what what you're going to be seeing is the boat on Arbitrum with only three proposals that were created. This is a test proposal, the, well, which is a signal proposal on the quick world scheme and the master world scheme. We have four schemes, for those new to this uh, term, the contribution reward that we usually use on, on mainnet and on XI, that's an scheme. So a scheme, what it does, it stores all the proposal data. And then you have a voting machine, which uh, the one that we are using in XI and mainnet is Genesis uh, protocol, uh, which is a, a voting machine that uses the gen token. And here, what we are going to use in Arbitrum on the Xbox is the DXD voting machine and we are going to be staking with DFC. In fact, this is the proposal that set the initial 24 permissions to, uh, yeah, to, to design the flow of funds that, is, that are going to, uh, that is going to work on, on, on the X vote. And well, later, if you enter, if you, if you connect to the Arbitrum RPC and you enter the Arbitrum network, you are going to see uh, you can see this proposal that again it set 24 permissions, which mainly what it does, it allows the flow of funds from the avatar to the quick wallet and swapper wallet scheme. From the quick wallet, we can do any transaction at, uh, to any contract. And from the swapper wallet, we can do, we, we are going to do uh, faster transactions uh, than the quick wallet scheme, but only to the swapper uh, smart contracts. So, the difference from what we are using right now is that uh, we can design a way of the uh, on how the funds are going to flow and how are we going to distribute them. And we can use uh, schemes that are configured to be faster because they're going to have less access to our funds. Right now on XDI and on mainnet, we are using the contribution reward and it has access to all our funds, to all our funds on on the on the exile on mainnet and exile so this is it this is uh, one of the first proposals this is in fact was the first stake of dxz in in arbitrum using dxz token that i personally bridge uh, all everything with my whitelisted address right now i'm the only whitelisted address on arbitrum that can uh, execute all these all these functions so i'm staking and once it once the proposal boosts I'm going to be voting and we are going to execute this proposal setting the initial permissions. Uh, this is something very powerful because right now on XI or mainnet, if we want to add new schemes and new actions, uh, yeah, it's, uh, there, is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of steps that are more technical. And here we can see, for example, later if you, if you, if you want to play around on the app, you can see all the configuration of the schemes later or the finance uh, here we are going to be showing the swapper dxd with balance tokens on the avatar on the quick wallet scheme on the swapper wallet this is very important because for example from the master wallet we are going to be sending funds from the avatar to the quick wallet and to the swapper wallet and from here from the sweep uh, from the swapper and quick wallet they are going to go to day-to-day -day operations like paying workers or swapper governance and financial actions. So let's say if you have, I don't know, a million dollars here, you send a hundred thousand dollars here and you distribute them. And when you're running out of funds, you send them again. So you have less, fund as less funds at risk and you can execute uh, quicker, uh, faster governance actions. So mainly this is it. This was the first test proposal that uh, no one bought it and no one uh, staked on it, but I, I can interact with the, with the Arbitrum chain and now I'm going to be sending a proposal and boop, that's it. The, the proposal expired, it finished, uh, it never executed, execute timeout. So this is how fast Arbitrum testnet works. It is not very cheap, but it is fast. So this is what we have on, right now on Arbitrum Mainnet. It is working, and um, we are using also the export on on Edzai and Mainnet. Uh, if you swap, 
if you change your your network here, for example, you select Zai, the application is going to refresh and get all the information, um, all the information needed to show you the the last state of the Xvolt. It is going to take some time to load, but once it loads, it's going to you are going to have all the information available here to navigate and find your way around the door. Now it now it loads and you come here to the, for example, this contribution reward uh, proposal. It gets all information from IPFS. You have all the course descriptions. Very important is that all this information comes directly from the blockchain. Uh, we are we are connected to the XI chain and we are getting all the information directly from there. You get the history of what happened, who stake, who voted on it, and well, that's it. If you want to create a new proposal, uh, you can select the schemes. We have templates also. You select the payment proposal here, it's going to load a template, and you can use a template to uh, to start, yeah, to do um, so. So, uh, so all of us in the future, uh, when we start using the Xbox, we are going to be following uh, certain templates for worker payments, and contribution proposals, and signal proposals. I guess that's it. Uh, do you want to see something else, Keenan? I guess that's more than enough. If you have any question, yeah, I, I think that's good. I do have a few questions. One thought, um, and maybe I missed it, but it would be interesting to see the uh, the governance uh, leaderboard that was set up on DX Vote. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, that's something funny. That's something that I that is still here. We need to work on it, but my main idea was to have like a governance ranking where we can, uh, I, I know, to give points. To those who voted, staked, and created proposals, the proposal creation depends on how much, uh, uh, yeah, how much people voted on your proposal and how many votes it got. It got. So here you can get, I know, like a final score. We have to work on it, but I, I thought it was fun to have like this leaderboard of this is of the, of the entire history of Exile. There are some values that they are very hard to get. So of who, which address is created uh, some proposals, but yeah, this is it. And I think this is fun. You can also see all the reputation, how, how it was increasing. The reputation distribution where here, I don't know why it doesn't work, but it was working till yesterday. This uh, is back. And you can see the total reputation, the total amount of positive votes uh, on, on the entire exit chain, uh, negative votes, and the total number of proposals. But yeah, this is something interesting. It will be fun to work on it in the future. Maybe give some reward to these to the best governors uh, of the exam. This actually works on every chain. So if you if we go to mainnet, let's see. Uh, well, if you once you use it, if you find an issue, you can you can go here to submit issue, open a new tab, and submit the bug that you found or a feature request. If you go here, you have all the template of uh, description of the bug, how you reproduce it. Once you submit the bug, I'm going to I'm going to make sure to see it on on, on GitHub. Uh, yeah, work on it. So I I think that DXVOT is yeah more than ready, so we can start using it for our day-to-day uh, -day operations. Uh, in fact, on some ways there are it works better than Alchemy because, for example, um, if you have a proposal in queue, well, this is another proposal that it is it is not working anymore. But here, for example, the stake. This is a recommended stake. Here we are taking in account the proposals that are going to be boosted and Alchemy does not. So today I got I got a report from a, from the user that told me, hey, I executed a, a boosted a proposal to change from pre-boosted to boosted, and it didn't boost. That 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 happened because the boost happened on Alchemy 
and it recommends you lower level. So it doesn't take in account the pre-boosted proposals. And now this user has to, it has to wait another 24 hours for their proposal to be boosted. So this is already fixed here. We will, so yeah, we fix a lot of stuff that, that we saw in Alchemy. Well, here you can see all the, uh, some finance details. This of course, all of this is going to be improved. This is just to display some of the information, but later we are going to work on a, on a new UI. And on mainnet we have, yeah, six, uh, six, uh, 657 proposals, uh, 190 negative votes, this is a total reputation, score. Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Are, thank you very much, Augusto. De nada. Uh, very important is that we are on five networks. We are on mainnet, uh, XDAI, MKB, Arbitrum Testnet, and Arbitrum. Great, thank you. Um, one, uh, one question here before we move on to the Swapper AMA. Um, maybe kind of a general question, not necessarily for you, Augusto, uh, but is DXL looking to enter the governance as a service space with DX vote? And if so, when is that expected? Oh man, that's a, a yeah. Governance as a service. Is someone doing that already? So what a, who is going to get, who is going to need governance? And first, we need to prove ourselves that we are good at governing ourselves, and then that we can govern something else. I guess we are ready for it. But yeah, we need to figure out how how this is going to work. I think that's that's an idea that we have been talking. Uh, we have been talking about that for for quite some time. And DX vote should be a stepping stone for that. Uh, once we are in control, in technical control of all our governance. We can we can provide the service because we know that we are not going to be relying on, on centralized services, right? Like Alchemy, like the graph. Once we are in complete control, I think now we can start thinking. Uh, once we have uh, the exode up and running, to say, okay, who needs uh, who need our service? Who needs our governance service? Because we know that our governance application, our, our governance um, yeah, framework, they are going to be up and running all the time because it's, it, it's not going to depend on any uh, in the technical level from anything else. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll add to that. Um, I'm a big believer in Augusto. So um, I totally think that uh, the Xvote could be like, uh, I don't know if governance is a service, but could be used by other applications and local or other DAOs and other you know, sort of communities that actually want to practice decentralization. Um, and there's already like interest into this um, over the past couple of weeks. So I do think like this will happen. Not sure exactly how to structure governance as a service, but hope to see like the vote being used by other organizations. I would say if we solve our governance problems with DX vote. If we do multi-chain governance, if we do guild uh, guilds for our products through DX vote, uh, I think other projects might be interested in in this. And and yeah, we should we should think of offering this to other projects. This might be like an alpha leak, but there are already people interested, like already other like prominent, let's say projects that have been in touch with me, so. Exactly. Uh, first, we need to fix all our issues of, because if we are going to offer a service, we need to be sure that we are going to be available, right? It's not like uh, if someone needs us, we need to know that, okay, we can act we are there because if we are going to provide a service, it's in, it needs to be a good service. We cannot be like, uh, oh yeah, wait, but uh, this is down and this is not working, or or yeah, this chain is not working anymore. So uh, and we cannot and we cannot help you now. Come come back to us in day. No, we have to provide a top service. 
So if we are going to be providing governance as a service, we need to have the best governance framework that we know that is going to work, that is going to be up and running all the time, and that we can use it, that we feel comfortable uh, with it, and that we can do anything we want. We want to be flexible, we need to be up and running all the time. Uh, this is the DX World goal, and once we have, once we, you know, once we have this, uh, this tool, this weapon on our hands, we are going to be are going to be able to start providing governance as a service, as a very good service. Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, going to move on here to Swapper. Uh, we're going to very briefly talk about Swapper and its deployment to Arbitrum uh, and the upcoming Swapper token before transitioning into the open AMA um, surrounding the token and Arbitrum launch. Uh, so maybe, Zet, if you want to start Excuse me, if you want to start with some general topics, I can help fill in the gaps and then we can move on to the AMA. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Zet. I'm the product owner of Swapper. I'm the designer of Swapper, a plan and design uh, the product. So I usually start off with just posting uh, a roadmap on the in the chat, in the town hall text chat, if you see it, and uh, just go through uh, some some things here. And maybe I'm not sure if there's like some new people here that's like interested in the Poe app, or or we just have a lot of hype surrounding Swapper. So maybe I should j just say a couple of words about Swapper and what it is. Um, so basically, Swapper is a fork of uh, Uniswap. Uh, it was uh, talked about almost more than a year ago uh, before the before sushi and before uh, other other actually uh, forked uniswap we talked about doing governance uh, for for uh, uh, basic uniswap with with a governance uh, for the fee uh, part and also governance for for the for the protocol so uh, that work actually started uh, end of last year and uh, as you see in the in the roadmap, we launched an alpha version in like December. Uh, we uh, we deployed it on XDAI, so we both have it on XDAI and on Mainnet. We supplied uh, liquidity directly from the treasury into Swapper, and uh, from there we actually started creating some really nice uh, features that uh, no other AMM out there has have. So one of them is something we call echo routing, which is basically uh, something uh, similar to what Oneish is doing, where they actually uh, oh, there's some. Did we mute? Yeah, sorry guys. So some uh, similar to what what uh, you've seen, like with Oneish, uh, where you actually send uh, a, a swap through uh, another service. And they take a fee. So the difference here is we actually don't don't take a fee, and we don't add to the gas when we do echo routing. So you could basically go to Swapper today and do uh, do trades on Uniswap, SushiSwap, Honeyswap, and many other like uh, XDAI, uh, XDAI and Mainnet uh, AMMs. And we don't add gas. It's like you would have gone to the to the service itself and doing the trade. So this is a pretty cool feature. Um, we added something we call due to self farming, which is basically anyone can go into the interface, create their own farm just by clicking, and and we we done that. So no, you don't need to be a coder or developer to actually create your own farm. Uh, we have multiple re rewards uh, as a unique uh, thing, and and obviously we do have farming uh, farming that we ourselves are deploying and others actually creating so now we're here uh, we are in q3 uh, we're looking at a swapper token launch we're looking at the arbitrum launch we're looking at making multiple networks uh, work in in a single app uh, flawlessly and uh, yeah that's that's why we're here and, and i wanted to open up some questions uh, do we have any questions already maybe we can um provide a little more info on 
the token and guild and then move into the the AMA. Yeah, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, sure. So basically today we we uh, we have Swapper and we do have all all the decisions we are making right now on Swapper is made through DeekStow and through uh, governance uh, on on uh, with the with the something uh, that's called rep so rep holders are voting on on stuff and we want to move uh, the decision making onto the uh, users and holders of of uh, swapper basically and we think they they would know the best of of what uh, swapper uh, potentially can be or will be so everything from the protocol to new features to new markets to what what kind of bridge that we use or uh, anything that that makes it a community owned product uh, so we we wanted to launch swapper as this uh, governance token and uh, we're doing it through uh, farming and through airdrops uh, so we do have we do have airdrops um coming out when arbitrum is launching the airdrops will be claimed through uh, through arbitrum so people would need to bridge over eth and claim it on arbitrum so we prepared that interface on on swapper so it, it should be like uh, foolproof anyone can do it uh, and uh, yeah so we're basically waiting for arbitrum to launch it should be in days uh, according to arbitrum they said they're gonna launch in august we're guessing it's gonna be the end days of august and we're we're in the end days right now uh so yeah swapper guild is still not it's still not out so we will use a snapshot until we have the guild up and and this is very relevant to what you guys saw uh, before with with dx vote uh, we're planning this to be part of dx vote uh, side side and uh, how do you call it like it uh, yeah it's a uh, it's inside of dxvot but it's not dxvot directly so this uh, this is the basics about the guild and uh, yeah thanks zet uh right before we move into the the actual ama um I do want to share the PO app here now. I've dropped instructions in the chat. You'll have to message the at PO app bot directly. Uh, and the secret code today is Whopper, S-W-P-R. Um, I can repeat that a couple times. I'm not going to drop it in the chat. Uh, we would like those that are actually attending the call to have access to it. But you can now claim your PO app for the next 45 minutes before it shuts off. Uh, message the bot the code S-W-P-R. Um, and yeah, any questions, feel free to, to reach out uh, and we can move on to the AMA here. Um, obviously, anyone is welcome to ask any questions in the chat or step up on the call. I did have some questions left with me the night before uh, that we can help fill the gaps with. Uh, but maybe we can start with Mango's comment here in the chat. Uh, how is the DXD holders allocation for Swapper token distributed? That's a good question. So uh, I'll, I'll post uh i'll post a screenshot of of the airdrops here so we have one we're calling a community airdrop which is basically the the one that is uh not the dxd holders airdrop uh so i'll, I'll go through the dxd holders airdrop because that was a question um so everyone that held dxd uh i don't remember exactly the date when we took the snapshot, it was sometime last week, I'm guessing. Um, we took a snapshot. Basically, uh, we are going to, uh, uh, according how much, how many uh, DXD you held on, on your wallet, we're going to divide 8 million swapper tokens uh, to you. So half of that is going to be unvested, which is basically unlocked. And you can claim them day one on Arbitrum, hopefully, if that the plan goes through. And the other half will be uh, vested for two years with one year of one year cliff, and that will be yeah claimed uh, when when the vesting is over. So 
half is half is uh, unlocked and the other half is uh, is is locked. Um, there is a plan of doing another snapshot. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly when the date will be, uh, where we actually compare how many DXC you still hold, and and if you sold or moved your DXD to another wallet, uh, that would be a problem. But that's a problem for later. Maybe we, we might be able to do something if we want to switch wallets or something like that. But we're still going to uh, reward people holding into DXD long term. And uh, uh, so, yeah, half of it is unvested and other, other half is vested for two years. Quick question for the vested token airdrop. What if someone buys more? Is it proportional? Would they get more if, like, right now this is kind of like alpha? And if it's proportional, before the airdrop for the vested tokens, if they keep buying DXD, will they get more swapper token? No. The, we just compare it to if you have as many or more, but we'll, you'll still get the same amount. Fair so enough, no. good. Yeah. The easy way to, to visualize that would be a wallet holding 50 DXD uh, would need to hold at least 50 DXD uh, by the second snapshot date to be eligible for that allocation uh, for the second half. Excellent, thank you. Um, I have a question here. Um, Regarding development, I do know we have Federico, the main developer on the call. Um, what has been the most challenging feature to develop on Swapper so far? Maybe you want to give a quick introduction to yourself first as well. Hey guys, yeah, so I'm Federico, the main uh, developer, lead dev on Swapper. Um, so uh, most most challenging, like. As of now, we uh, I've just developed the the token itself and the the whole like infrastructure regarding the the airdrop. And I think the most uh, challenging thing was getting the whitelist done. A lot of different places to query and to 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 get gather information from. Um, but like, there's still a lot of work to do uh, regarding Swapper around Swapper. So uh, I think. Uh, I'll see something, uh, well, I see more work um, in the future and like, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, for now, I think the, the, the whitelist creation is what at least the most like time intensive thing, uh, because just because you need to take like into consideration many, many things. Uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, thank you. Uh, another one left with me here yesterday. Uh, if the Swapper Guild won't be ready for the token distribution, when will it be, and how will token holders vote until then? Good question. Um, we proposed in the uh, DAO talk post and in the on the proposal that we will have a snapshot dot page. Um, uh, now, I will work, what are we calling it? Uh, until we have the guild. So basically. Swapper token holders will be able to vote through signaling on on uh, on snapshot dot page. We are prioritizing uh, the guild. Uh, we we talked about we're talking about it uh, every day on on how to do that with our resources. Uh, so we might um, get. I think we we have in the proposal that the guild will be ready in like a couple of months it might be shorter time than that uh, it depends on on how it goes but until then snapshot uh, dot page will be the place where we vote excellent thank you yeah quick reminder as we step in here um, to anyone that doesn't know, uh, we are distributing a Poe app with this call. Um, to anyone that missed the initial call, you'll need to message the Poe app bot with the code SWAPPER, that's S-W-P-R. Uh, and I actually have a question surrounding that uh, for the SWAPPER team. Uh, it looks like the DXDAO Poe app holders received an allocation of SWAPPER token in the airdrop. 
Uh, should the community expect further attendance-based incentives and events, particularly surrounding Swapper? I think so. I think uh, everything from voting to attending meetings to working, developing, everything. We should reward uh, growing the community, reward uh, making the products uh, evolve. Um, so yeah, definitely. And the Swapper community itself will have a say in that through the Swapper treasury and controlling that with voting, as will the DXDAO community through the controlling the token reserve of Swapper. So one thing uh, that you saw maybe in the screenshot I sent, 1% of the airdrop reserve is reserved. It's not distributed. It's not going to be distributed now. Uh, I'm expecting Swapper holders to vote on where that percentage will be distributed. And it could be divided into multiple pieces. So it doesn't need to be distributed to one uh, entity or one, one group of people. Uh, I'm expecting external communities to be interested in, in Swapper. It could be anything from, yeah, to, to new projects, to old projects. We just want people to, to come in here, vote, and say why they want that, uh, uh, that reserve uh, distributed to them. And uh, Swapper will have its own treasury with uh, more Swapper tokens. So it's up to Swapper token holders to vote on this stuff. Uh, it's not, we're not, uh, we, we're doing some real governance here. So we don't decide, like I don't decide, even though I'm, I'm like just, a, I'm just a worker, even though you can call me a product owner. Uh, it's up to, up to the DAO. Excellent. One more question here. Um, can you talk a bit about Swapper's bridging plans and what strategy surrounds that? Yeah, that's a good good question. I think if you if you check how my, how many bridges there there are out there, there are a lot, and there's more networks coming out. We see. I mean, I, I would say it's hard for a user to navigate through all these bridges and know what's the difference. Uh, and there's a big chance of getting scammed or actually using a bridge that is not secure. Um, I think for Swapper, the same same idea we have behind Echo Echo uh, Echo routing, where we actually uh, send send transactions through to, to another uh, AMM without actually taking fees, without taking extra gas, uh, we could potentially do the same thing with bridges. Basically, collecting multiple bridges that is trustworthy and and actually showing in, uh, in a chart, like what is the difference between these and which one should I choose? So basically, it, uh, it, it's, it could be like a, yeah, you could see it like, like a one inch for bridges and and I know as a as a DeFi user myself, I would lo love to have that. I, I don't know which bridge I should use and what's the difference between them. Let me send you guys a screenshot of just a just a concept of the bridge. Uh, and just to get an idea what's what what's we're talking about here. So basically, if you go to the town hall text, you will see a screenshot. And uh, you can see the idea here where we show the comparison of how much gas it costs, how much fees it costs, how long time does it take for, for me to bridge. And, and this would give the user much better idea how to, which bridge to choose. And, and yeah, and I, I don't think there's any other place where, where you can do this. Thank you, Zed. Love the, the alpha leak here in the chat. <laughs> and just a reminder to anyone as we're, we're coming up to the top of the hour here, you're always welcome to speak up here in the call and or in the text chat uh, with any questions you have here. Uh, I do have a couple more left with me that should take us to the end, but anyone that's actually here obviously has priority. All right, one more question here left with me. Let's see. Um, 
Previously, it was discussed that swappers should deploy on lots of chains to align with the bridging strategy. Will Swapper continue to focus on Arbitrum primarily or still deploy on the many chains like Polygon or Avalanche? Um, I'm sorry, you need to repeat that. I was writing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a bit of a long one. They say, yep. previously it was discussed that Swapper should deploy on lots of chains to align with the bridging strategy. Will Swapper continue to focus on Arbitrum or deploy on many chains like Polygon or Avalanche? So when it comes to the bridge, I think it makes sense to launch on on multiple networks, and and we don't necessarily need to um, have liquidity on all these networks. Uh, so the idea is maybe maybe we'll have multiple much more networks on the bridge, but not on the swapping or farming part of of Swapper. And I think this is this is up to the swap Swapper token holders to vote on. Uh, we we do. Like we don't want to send people bridging between in between uh, unsecure networks. So if we don't believe in a network, uh, it's up to like the voters to vote if they want that or not, right? So we already discussed like sh should we deploy on Polygon or should we deploy on Binance? Uh, like do we believe in these networks? Do we believe in the decentralization of of these networks? And maybe maybe for the user's sake we'll do that, but in the uh, bigger idea of of us only deploying on 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 safe networks uh we might not it's up to the swap holders or maybe it's even up to the rep holders because we might need the style basis but that's more technical i'm not i'm not sure exactly what's needed if we only do the bridge we might not need the style basis Excellent. Thank you. I actually only have one more question left with me, and it's when can we expect an updated roadmap? But it does look like, obviously, you started the call off here with an updated roadmap for I those of you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's I those think... of you. So yeah, I, I think maybe for every for every big release we do, I update the roadmap. A lot of things changes in the roadmap, obviously. We do. We still do have resource problems when it comes to uh, having uh, uh, enough enough people working on Swapper. So if you guys are interested in, in, in contributing to DXDAO, please reach out. Um, and and yeah, I would be happy to have have you. Excellent, guys. Leaving the window open here for just another minute. Um, any other final questions here before we, we finish up? I see a few people typing. I guess this is an opportunity to have one final call of attention to everyone in this call that may not have heard. Uh, we do have a POAP for this event. Um, you will need to message the uh, POAP bot, which I can link to again. At POAP bot on Discord, you'll message them directly. Uh, and you will issue the code SWPR. Um, there are a few people that were telling me they're having some problems. So anyone that is unable to claim, give me a shout. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Craig should get a PO app. We have a uh, from Lead Parachute says, what is DXDAV's stance on aliens? <laughs> If we have a <laughs> excellent guys well if we have no more questions i'll just let everyone finish typing here um we will end the call here the truth is out there <laughs> Thank you guys for joining. I'm super excited for Swapper. Super excited for the token. Super excited for Arbitrum. And uh, yeah, there will be some farming. Uh, just uh, follow our, our channels and yeah, get get updated on on when thing starts. Uh, and see you around. 
Thank you, Zet. Um, like you said, pay attention to our social channels uh, as Arbitrum starts talking. Hopefully, in the next couple of days, we will be very vocal. Uh, we have lots of marketing and, and community updates planned for the Arbitrum launch, so keep an eye on us. Lots of exciting stuff going on. Thank you, everyone, for attending the community call today. Uh, if you had any trouble with the PO app, please give me a shout. Um, it does look like that might be a code distribution problem. Um, so leave a message with me or in our support channels. And yeah, thank you for joining. And we'll see you next week for the recap or in two weeks for the next community call. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Thank you.